why iPhone 10 made me love the iPhone 8 Plus coming up right now. Let's go. So what is up guys, Nick here helping you to master your technology and welcome to why the iPhone 10 made me love the iPhone 8 Plus. Now, a couple things I wanna say before we get into the reasons why is that I've had both of these phones since launch and I basically tend to lean towards the 8 Plus and I kinda of love it more than I do the iPhone 10. And now a lot of people are gonna disagree just simply cause it's the newer phone. You might think the design looks better, a little bit newer, but I'm gonna tell you the reasons why in this video. So let's get on with the first one, which has to do with their displays. Okay guys, so let's talk about the displays and why the iPhone X's display made me love the 8 Plus's display. Now, of course, it is a nice new narrow display, easy to reach the sides of the phone. It is pretty tall though, so it's still kind of hard to reach one hand on the iPhone 10. So the iPhone 10 is still not a one-handed phone to me for the majority of consumers. The iPhone 8 will still be that phone as well as the iPhone SE. So this display is still not super one-handed, but that's not the reason why it made me love the iPhone 8 Plus. The reason why is because the 8 Plus is still a wider display. So 16 by nine is going away soon, but while we still have it, I tend to enjoy this a little bit more. It's easier to type on the iPhone 8 Plus. It's a wider experience, so it's much easier for me to type accurately on the screen. Also, when I'm reading text, like I'm reading a Kindle book or I'm reading in a you know technology application where I'm reading some news or something like so, you could kind of see more of what's on the screen on this phone. So it's wider across. So let's go over here into some random article here. And you could see it's just wider across than what you're going to get on the iPhone 10. So that's one of the reasons with the display. There's another reason too. Now, when you walk into an Apple store, of course, it's gonna be hands down looking better to you on an iPhone 10. It's got that popping color, that vivid look that you, you know, when the lights are shining on it, it just looks absolutely stunning. But on the day to day, I find that this display doesn't look that much worse than the OLED panel. Now, the OLED panel does have deeper blacks, and but they're about, you know, calibrated about the same. So with that being said, you know, paying a couple hundred dollars more for this still might be worth it for you. After using this for quite a while, I haven't noticed it to be that much better, in my opinion, than the iPhone 8 Plus when it comes to just everyday practical use. So another reason why the iPhone 10 made me love the iPhone 8 Plus has to do with the build quality. Now, the stainless steel is a pretty looking piece of material that you do get on your iPhone 10, but this thing scratches quite easily. And I've tried my best to keep scratches off this thing and even switching out cases, I've been getting scratches on the stainless steel. Now, any iPhone 10 users could probably tell you the same thing. Um, if they're, you know, unless they're using a case that has like microfiber material around the edges, this thing scratches quite easily. Now, it's not like the scratching that I seen on the jet black iPhone or like what we've seen on the old iPod touches. It does scratch the same way, but it, it's not that, you know, not durable. Like the old iPod would scratch super easy. This is a better material than that. However, it's not as sturdy and durable as the aluminum around the edges of the 8 Plus. So the 8 Plus gives you, you know, this aluminum build that was basically on all the iPhones before it. And it basically holds up well to scratches. Now you can scratch it, don't get me wrong. It's not scratch proof. It's not ding proof. You could ding this aluminum, you could scratch it. But on the whole, this aluminum has held up better than my iPhone 10, and that's why the iPhone 10 made me love the iPhone 8 Plus when it comes to the build. Next up is biometrics or Face ID. Now, Face ID, let's check this out. When it wants to work, it works, and it gets better over time, don't get me wrong. This is probably the best face unlock feature I've seen on any smartphone, hands down. However, when I wake up, I got, you know, you wake up, you got that crust in your eyes, you know, it's the morning or whatever, or you're wearing, you know, certain types of glasses. Sometimes this thing trips up. You know, if you if you hold it on a certain angle, you got to be looking right at the phone. Sometimes it trips up. And I still think that Touch ID, while it might not be secure as secure, according to Apple, I mean, how many people are going to get your finger to cut off your finger and, and do a Touch ID? This thing, it doesn't matter if it's on an angle, it works. It doesn't matter if you pull it out your pocket it works. So to me, it's still more fast, it's more efficient and more practical on a day to day. So, you know, it really made me appreciate that feature that a lot of times we take for granted when we get used to using a phone, 
We take for granted things like a fingerprint scanner, but then when you go to something that doesn't have it, you start to remember and appreciate how much you really did love that feature. So I do love that feature. Not that it's coming back on the, on the future iPhones. It's probably not ever coming back. But while we still have an 8 Plus, I still love it. So let me talk about the battery life experience with both of these. Now, the iPhone 10 is not the worst battery life on an iPhone. This phone will easily get you through most of your day. If you're beating on it hard, it might not get through the day. But the iPhone 8 Plus will get you into the next day. So if you're beating on the iPhone 8 Plus, you're getting through a day, whether you're beating on it or you're not. So what that means when I say that is that is a analogy for if you're using it really heavily, you know, a lot of stuff all day long, beast mode, you're going to get through the day on iPhone 8 Plus where you might have to charge by 10 o'clock p.m. at night or 9 o'clock p.m. at night on an 8 plus or on an iPhone 10. So with that regard, you know, the iPhone 10 has made me appreciate the great battery life I get on the iPhone 8 plus. And that's why I love this phone a little more too, is because this one doesn't give me as good a battery life. Okay. So next up is display zoom. Now, some people probably don't even think about this feature, but I really missed this feature when I didn't see it on my, you know, iPhone 10. So I can view in go to a standard view or I can go into a zoom view. Now, I don't think there's any excuse why Apple couldn't put a zoom view on the iPhone 10. I just don't understand it, quite frankly. They put it on the iPhone 8 and that's got a smaller screen. This is just like in between the iPhone 8 and the 8 Plus, no zoom view. Now, with zoom view, I get my large icons here on the iPhone 8 Plus and you can see you get these tiny icons on iPhone 10, which makes the phone overall feel smaller. If we were to be able to have zoomed icons here on the 10, it might look a little bit bigger than it does. So that's an, another reason why I really do love the iPhone 8 Plus over the iPhone 10. So this next one is a value proposition statement or something I'm gonna say here related to the camera. So when I first got the 10, I thought it was gonna be a better camera and it is a little bit better when it comes to the front having a portrait mode. You don't get portrait mode on the front of iPhone 8 Plus. As you can see, it just flips over to the back. However, I find that that portrait mode doesn't even work that well. It's soft around the edges. It's not very useful. And it's not even, I don't think it works well enough for me to even want to post a social media photo too often with this portrait mode. Now, some people are going to disagree. Obviously, a lot of these can be disagreed, but I find a Pixel 2 to be much better than this. And why I even mention this point is because for less money, I feel like the camera is not a selling point between these two and picking both of these up, going out with them. I feel like I got the same camera in my pocket. So that's another reason why the iPhone 10 made me love the A plus because I paid less money and I still got the same camera as the thousand dollar phone. So next up is reachability. Now reachability is included here on the iPhone 10. You see, I missed it on that first tap. Reachability is included here for the iPhone 8 plus when you just double tap the home button with your fingerprint sensor. Now I find that the one on the iPhone 10 is not as intuitive because it sometimes you'll tap like into the Safari or whatever's on your dock and accidentally trigger something else instead of the, you know, the reachability. Whereas because this is separated from the home screen down here on the eight plus the home button, it's almost a hundred percent accurate when you want to use reachability. I mean, you're not going to hit a button when you're not using the screen to do the same function that was a physical button on a prior version. So reachability, when I do need this, I find it to be more intuitive for the 8 Plus. And that's another reason why the iPhone 10 made me love the iPhone 8 Plus. You see, I'm not even getting it every time here. So there it goes on the iPhone 10. Now, the iPhone 10, don't get me wrong, does have some great gestures. I like the one where you can go ahead and swipe between applications. I really do like that one. It reminds me of the trackpad on the Mac, but the reachability one is a reason why I still love the iPhone 8 Plus. Okay, and one last reason is kind of a personal reason. It's not really a reason that, you know, everyone's gonna agree with is that the LCD for some reason is easier on the eye for me at night when reading and stuff like that. I find myself, you know, getting a little bit of a headache using the OLED panel for too long on the iPhone 10. I don't know why this is. And I find that on the iPhone 8 Plus, I don't have that issue. Maybe that's because, you know, I use a Mac and that LCD a lot, and then my eyes are used to it. My eyes might not be used to it OLED as much. But then again, when I use the Note 8, I don't have a similar issue. So I don't know. That's really a personal thing. You might prefer OLED. LCDs might hurt your eyes. That's really a personal thing. But I had to include it because it's a truth I wanted to share here. Now, the conclusion is... Overall, the iPhone 10 has been basically a pretty on par experience with the iPhone 8 in terms of performance, in terms of camera, 
in terms of build quality, they both feel premium. The 10 feels a little bit more premium just because it's a newer design. It does have, you know, a stainless steel and, uh, against aluminum, which is a more premium material, even though it scratches easier. But with the widescreen and, you know, it just has more value to me in the iPhone 8 Plus. It feels like a big, luxurious sedan vehicle. And the iPhone 10 feels like a little new sports car, like maybe a little Tesla or something like that. Maybe a Tesla Roadster if I was to do a car analogy. But you know, day to day, the iPhone 8 Plus is a more comfortable phone to use, in my opinion, where because of the newness of the iPhone 10, it's a first generation product. It does have some bumps in the road. So, you know, you feel it a little bit more, just like as in a sports car, if you hit a bump, you feel it a little bit more. So anyway, that's it. That's why the iPhone 10 made me love the iPhone 8 Plus. If you guys agree with me, drop a like down below. If you don't agree, dislike whatever you like to do give me a comment let's talk about this nick here helping you to master your technology if you're new here consider subscribing for more i will catch you all in the next episode and peace